Today's video has been made possible with support from Onshape. More on them later, but first, let's watch the video. Hey guys, Adam Savage in my cave and my benchtop mill is now fully set up and operational. I have actually used it on a couple of little builds and I'm really happy with it. I wanted to walk you through its features and how I have set it up. Best thing is for me to just start to machine something and show you why a smaller milling machine is actually super useful to me in my process here in the cave. The Sharp is phenomenal and it's super accurate and it's brand new, but it is a giant machine. And when I am machining small, smaller objects, I sometimes want more sensitivity out of my hand wheels. These are the hand wheels and they move this in the XY plane. And frankly, the feedback I get from the hand wheels is actually really important in my machining process uh, so that I don't break small bits. And I, just, I thought I'd just start by machining just to show you what I'm talking about. I've got a piece of uh, rich light in here. Uh, this is my vice, there we go, my vice wrench that I made recently. There we go, Ooh. that's it. Excellent, nice and tight. Uh, now I'm going to uh, use this little tiny 1 8 inch milling bit and I'm gonna put it in my R8 collet. Uh, I actually, a note, when you buy new R8 collets, uh, you're gonna have to deburr them. They're gonna come most often from the factory with very sharp edges around here and sometimes little tiny burrs. Things You'll be able to feel a little ridge when you run your fingers over. So I went carefully through all of these R8 collets taking off the burr and then I actually ran a micrometer on this and found the run out. Uh, every machine has run out, which means uh, run out is the lack of concentricity. The run out on this machine is two ten thousandths of an inch or roughly five microns of run out. That is damn good out of the box. I'll pop this in here. I have installed my automatic draw bar from my old bridge port. And there we go. That makes quick work of this. There are much more expensive solutions than this, but this honestly $150-ish solution, which a lot of different people sell versions of on eBay, absolutely great, honestly. Uh, the machine is on. Uh, I have it set at, a, at its lowest speed right now, and that's actually something that's worth showing you. Uh, the lowest speed is kind of remarkable. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That's 175 RPM. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, I can, not to say that that one doesn't go to a low speed, but it doesn't go this low. Uh, I'm gonna increase that a little bit. That's about 1200. And so I'm just gonna machine a little path through the top of this. And as I go, I'm getting some feedback from my hand wheel and that feedback is really, really important. That hand feel really, really matters. And I get a much more sensitive one from the smaller machine simply because it is smaller. The amount of run out on the Sharp is about the same. It's about two ten thousandths of an inch. But the amount of sensitivity I get out of this is greater. So there's two reasons that I wanted a little bench top. One was to have this sensitivity for making small rigs. And plus, you see my attitude here. I am on my stool, sitting there <laughs> facing this thing. I get a really, really good close-up view of this. All of this is gonna make the smaller machining operations I need to do better. Um, we can actually come up, we can go, oh, did I not lock this down enough? Is that something that I might have done? <laughs> I got a little bit of movement on there, so hold on. Turn that off, clamp this down. Oh, ah, there we go, that's it. So let's undo that and make sure this is seated. Excellent, excellent. Bring this back down. 
My one issue is that forward on this machine is counterclockwise, reverse is clockwise, and on the sharp, it's the opposite. I almost want to go in here, open this up, and rewire this switch so that it's the same, because I've already burned out one end mill by running it into a piece of aluminum in reverse. No, I ran it into a piece of steel in reverse and burned it out. Uh, so that's forward. Bring this back down. Excellent. And I think I can turn up the speed here. Let's go to 2000 RPM, give or take. So sensitive machining uh, and better hand feel for smaller operations is the main reason I am so happy to add this tool to my collection. The other is to have a secondary operation mill. Uh, and in this case, I, would, I can set up, and you've seen me set up the big mill with a stop there so that I put in multiple pieces and I'm able to put them into the same location, do the same machining operation on them, uh, and keep doing repeats like that. There are frequently times when you have more than one operation to do, and it's an open question sometimes. Do you do all the operations on a piece in sequence, or do you do uh, you run in parallel? Will you do operation, 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 turn it, operation, operation, operation? This allows me to have a secondary operation, so I can do primary there, come over here and do a secondary uh, uh, cut. And that actually increases my flow state, decreases the threshold to get to that flow state, it's perfect. Thanks again to Onshape for making today's video possible. Onshape is a professional CAD tool for makers and businesses, and it was started by the former founder and CEO of SolidWorks. Onshape is a cloud native tool, kind of like Google Docs, so that multiple people can work on projects at the same time. It also requires no special software installation to use, and this makes it ideal for working in teams, remote collaborations, and even open source projects. They're also including professional grade CAM very soon, so you can look forward to that. I am. You can learn more and try out a free maker account at onshape.pro slash tested or click the link below. Speaking of flow state, let's talk about how I've set up my fighter pilot arrangement here. I want to just clean up everything. Um, so here is the mill. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. We'll set that like that. Move that like this to the center. Uh, so I've got my R8 collets over here. Uh, I have access to all of them. That's a really nice location for them. And I can, uh, I can, yep. Ooh, that was what I was not supposed to do. I'm supposed to hold on to the end mill so that it doesn't fall and bang into big chunks of steel. Me and culpa. Uh, pop that back. I'll put this over here. I have one more R8 collet, which is an R8 for a Jacobs uh, 6JT chuck. Um, is it a Jacobs? It's actually not a Jacobs. Um, this is somebody else's. Anyway, uh, this is totally critical to have a drill chuck for a mill. I happen to have this one, so it's living here right now. I haven't figured out where it goes. But because I have this smaller vise, um, one of the most uh, common things to use with a vise is a uh, is what you call parallels. Well, you call them parallels because they're parallels. There we go. Um, and on my other vise, uh, which is a six inch vise, I have six inch parallels. This is a four inch vise, and I managed to get some lovely little three inch parallels for it. That's fantastic. Um, these. I just love having the, the smaller ability to do some finer setups. Uh, I made this 
parallel holder for them out of uh, some scrap two by four I had lying around. And I also, uh, I didn't know about uh, specifically uh, jobber drills, but these are great. They're pretty self-centering. I bought an old drill index for a full, for a full complement of 29 of them. Uh, and these, like the other, uh, like the other mill, this full set just lives right here on the mill. I actually built this side table. It is bolted and hanging off two pieces of pipe I have here and pieces of all thread through which I have run my air supply for being able to blow stuff off. On top of that is the DRO that came with the, that stands for digital readout, that came with the mill and it's a fantastic DRO. Uh, it gives me accuracy to the 10,000th here, that's the fourth number there, on the X, Y, and the Z axis. And the Z axis doesn't just have this gross movement here, uh, it has a finer movement here to where I can, uh, oh, did I lock that? Yes, I did. Where I can lower it by hand here, and I've got a separate DRO here for this quill feed. And that's really, really helpful. Again, for the fine adjustment, and we can just put this out and it'll go back up to, yeah, there we go, it's back to normal. Um, that's fantastic. On the side here, I have added a magnet of standard tap drill sizes. Uh, this will tell me that a, uh, well, this is all the desk, right, 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 yeah, here we go. So what I can look up here is things like, okay, I've got a 080 screw, I wanna run a 364 as the tap drill. Uh, I've got 1024, that means I am going to use a number 25 drill. Uh, that is information I constantly have to look up. So I bought a magnet chart of it and cut it into pieces to put on him. And this is for the metric because I have finally integrated metric into this shop, uh, not fully, but enough that I can repair metric hardware and tap and fix and uh, 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 refine. Uh, let's see what else I've got my, oh right. Uh, I've put on this little, this beautiful little LED machine lamp, which I dig. I've got these all over the shop. We'll include an Amazon link for these. These are just fantastic. Uh, this is the machine lamp that came with the machine. It came with the clamp. Instead, I actually drilled and tapped it right into the side of the machine uh, because I wanted it to sit right there. Um, and um, frankly, that's one of the most fun parts about a mill is they're so customizable, they're so modifiable, they're very forgiving machines for that. Uh, and, you know, every machinist has their kind of preferred setup. And speaking of that, uh, as you saw in the video of my construction, I added lights into the storage, and this basically does two things. One, it means I don't forget about tools that are sitting in the back there because I can't see them. Uh, and two, it sort of forces me to keep things neat down there. Um, and that is good practice. I noticed this when I built my other milling machine uh, equipment cabinet, and I am now going to put lights into every cabinet I ever build again because it engenders neatness. It, the lights taunt you. They, they tell you, look, that's clean. You, you don't, you don't want to look at it unless it's like nicely laid out. And again, I'm not sure this is the final equipment layout down here. I'm assuming that I'm bringing in my, my, my tiny one, two, three blocks because I figure those will actually matter more on the smaller mill than they do on the bigger mill, on, which I've never actually used them for on the bigger mill. Uh, but these are basically little setup blocks. Oh, and then last but not least, um, for any milling machine, you need the ability to clamp stuff to the table, just like this vise is clamped into the table. And it's clamped at a very high precision. I ran a micrometer on this and I have effectively one ten thousandth of run out from one side of this vise to the other. Uh, and the clamping system is a whole system that works really well. It's pretty much identical for all milling machines. And I bolted it right to the front here. That might not be the most optimal place. I may end up moving it, but frankly, I kind of like having it right here. When you're getting ready to clamp stuff down, you're often sort of picking and choosing stuff from this a la carte. 
every clamp setup is totally different. And I like having it right here so I can really think through it. I've spent my whole life having this clamp set off to the side and sort of having trouble seeing things. So even though it's kind of in my way right here, it's not really. And I think I'm keeping it here for the time being. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else yet. Like I got these air blowers, which I ran off of the top. I've actually split the air coming to my, uh, 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 to my quick release here and run the secondary line down here for blowing stuff off. And uh, like I said, I've already used this for a couple of small builds and it's a fantastic, sturdy, robust little monster. And I'm really happy about it. Thanks you guys for joining me for this show and tell. Uh, I would love to see your benchtop milling setups. If you wanna post them in the comments, I will go check it out.